Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. So in machine learning, there are problems that can vary wildly in difficulty. There are some problems that are really easy to solve and others not so much. So just to get us started, we will focus on solving one of the easiest machine learning problems of all time. It's like the lowest possible hanging fruit. So naturally, they're really easy to pick up. But before we get there, we need to set up some rules. Well, actually, there's only going to be one rule, and that is if you want to AI something, AI it yourself. That means, for example, if we ever needed neural networks, and we will definitely need neural networks, we will code them ourselves from scratch, because we f***ing hate ourselves. That's why. So that means no TensorFlow. PyTorch? Hell no. NumPy? Yes! 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 Show me a moves! So as I was saying, we're probably only going to be using NumPy, maybe QPy, which is like the GPU version of NumPy, but that kind of depends on the situation. So from the title of the video, you probably already guessed what that low-hanging fruit was that I was talking about a moment ago. That's right, we're gonna solve mazes today, but like the computer version of it. And in the computer version of a maze, the goal is to go from your starting position to the end position, which is somewhere on the map. And there are also walls that you can't go through because, you know, there are walls. And with that unnecessarily long explanation out of the way, we can get to start coding this thing. Okay, I've implemented the code, and if we run this thing, we should see the maze and it's f***ed. the walls are missing okay i think i fixed the wall problem if you run this thing again we see that everything is where it's supposed to be now let's have a closer look at what we've made so far in this grid rule there are a few different types of tiles you've got the ground tiles that you can walk on you've got the green tile which is the gold tile and you also have the yellow tile, which is the starting position. And finally, you have these dark gray tiles, which are the walls. And the lucky individual that gets to solve our maze is our little blue character here. His name is Greg. And his goal is to go from here all the way to there. And at each time, Greg has four moves at his disposal. He can either move right, down, left and up. Now at this point, you might say, well, what, what's the problem? The solution is right there. Just go this way and you're done. What is the big deal? The problem is that Greg doesn't see the world the way you see it. From his perspective, the world doesn't look like this, but rather like this. At every time step, Greg only sees his current position and the reward he got for the move that he performed last. That means he has no idea where the goal actually is and his only way to get there is by randomly trying all the possible moves. Now, there are already a bunch of algorithms that can effectively calculate the correct path from start to finish, like Dijkstra and A star, both of which are really interesting and we will definitely make a video on those, but they assume knowledge about the environment which we might not have beforehand. Now, the question is, how do we solve this environment given that, first, we don't know what the world looks like, and second, we only get Greg's current position and the reward he got for the last action he performed. Now, you as the highly educated viewer of this channel might already have an idea which probably goes along the lines of Well, the solution is quite elementary. Just let Greg run around randomly and simply keep track of how good certain actions were in certain states. Easy peasy. Brute forcing your way to the solution is one way to go about it, but now let's explore why that idea is terrible, or at the very least why that idea is incomplete. So we have the situation where Greg is running around randomly and keeping track of how good certain actions were in certain states, but in the end we might have the following problem. Consider the situation where Greg is sitting around in the middle of the grid and wants to move to the right. Greg, and by extension we, know that he's currently sitting in position 4-4. If now Greg steps one move to the right, he lands on position 4, 5 and receives the reward of minus 1. Now let's summarize this a bit more concisely and also introduce some notation. At time step t, Greg's current position is 4, 4 and the action he performs is moving to the right. On the next time step, he lands on position 4, 5 for which he receives the reward of negative 1. After a while, Greg will have traversed all the states and will have a mental image of the world which looks like this. By the way, we're only focusing on the action of moving to the right. But this solution is incomplete. Can you see why that will be the case? The problem is that it implies that moving from here to there is worth as much as moving from here to here, which shouldn't be the case since the latter move brings you closer to the goal and hence should be worth more. 
That means that the running around randomly strategy doesn't take into consideration how good being in the next state actually is. That means we need an algorithm that not only keeps track of the past, but also uses that information to look into the future. This is where I'd like to introduce you to... Q-Learning. Q-Learning, of course. I saw this coming. Q-Learning is a model-free reinforcement learning algorithm to learn the value of an action in a particular state. It does not require a model of the environment, and it can handle problems with stochastic transitions and rewards without requiring adaptions. Do I need to snap my fingers? I thought so. So um, yeah, Q-learning is exactly what we need. And luckily it is very straightforward and very easy to implement, so let's have a closer look at it. This is all of Q-learning summarized in one picture. I know it looks very confusing on the first glance, but trust me, it really isn't. Okay, now let's break this down a little. So first of all, we have this Q function, which basically serves as a lookup table. In later videos, we probably won't be using tables anymore, but rather something like a neural network. This is because if we deal with environments that have more states than there are atoms in the universe, then we probably we won't be able to store all of those states in a table. And the parameters of the Q function are the current state and the current action. And the value that is stored for that state and that action tells you how good it is to do that particular action in that particular state, which is minus one in this case. Next up, you got the learning rate or the step size, and it makes sure that the changes you make aren't that big. Next up is the reward, which is negative one in our case. By the way, it's negative one to make sure that the agent gets to the goal as quickly as possible. Next up, you have the discount factor. The discount factor measures how much weight you want to give future rewards. That means the closer it is to zero, the less you care about future rewards. Or in other words, the closer it is to zero, the more short-sighted the algorithm is. And and finally, we have the actual future reward. Here the question is, how good is the next state? And to answer that, the algorithm looks at the entry for the next state and assumes you would take the best action, which is the max part. But the algorithm only assumes that you would take the best action, regardless if you actually do it or not. For example, you could be following a random policy, in which case you wouldn't be following the optimal policy of taking the best possible action. This is what people mean when they say that Q-learning is an off-policy algorithm. Okay, enough talk, let's implement Q-learning. And the good thing for us is that it is very easy to implement and really doesn't take all that much effort. And with all of this said and done, we can finally let Greg do his thing. Now let's try something a little more complex. This time there are a lot more walls and the environment is significantly bigger. And even though you might say, well this is just a small grid world, what does this have to do with anything? The truth is that grid worlds very precisely show the whole problem in all of reinforcement learning, which is exploration versus exploitation. Or in other words, when should the agent, or Greg in this case, just run around randomly and gather as much information as he can, or when should he try to get as much reward as he can? So in this case, the problem is pretty simple. You only have one goal, and that goal is what gives you the most reward. And Greg is trying to find that goal. But it could be the case that there is another goal, somewhere on the map which Greg doesn't know about and that gives a lot more reward than the green tile we have there. Essentially there is no way of knowing it, you just have to try to find the right balance. Anyway, let's see how this is going.
anyway this was it for this video i really hope you enjoyed it and if you did leave a like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on future videos so anyway thanks for watching and as always stay healthy wear a mask and i don't know see you in the next one